Hello everybody, it is Locke here and today I am super excited to be bringing you some Marta proc in Modern. So Marta is a deck which has been on the fringes for ages in Modern, but in the past two weeks has had two massive results. It came first in a 354 player Pro Tour qualifier on Magic Online, and then it placed in the top eight in Grand Prix Stockholm. The deck list that we are playing today is card for card, the same as the deck which came first in the PTQ, and it is only one card different being this Cavern of Souls from the deck that top aided the Grand Prix. Let's break down the deck. It's called Marta Proc. The name comes from two cards. The first is Marta of Sands, a really cool one drop that can gain you a ton of life, usually around 15 or so on turn two of the game. We then have Proclamation of Rebirth, a really cool sorcery, not for its main ability when you just cast from your hand, but for the forecast ability, where for six mana you get this uncountable effect, this ability which just reanimates something. You can do it again and again and again. So you can imagine already these two cards are great together because you get to, you know, seven mana and suddenly you're gaining tons of life every single turn of the game, which can be hard to beat on its own, but that's not why this deck is exciting. Martyr of Sands is really good at slowing down the game, but it's also really good at getting you a bunch of free wins in combination with its best friend, Sarah Ascendant. This card can potentially be a 6-6 flying lifelinking creature on turn two, if you have a Marta and a Sarah Ascendant in the first two turns of the game, and that is a really good way to just end the game in a hurry. Funnily enough, despite that combo, this deck doesn't aim to end the game in a hurry. It aims to grind out some really slow games of magic, and is actually quite controlling in its nature. So let's go through the deck card for card. First, I'll talk about Ranger of Aeos, because this synergizes with the combo I've already talked about, because it finds both of the combo pieces and makes it a pretty consistent deal, this whole business of turning your Sarah Ascendants into 6-6 six, six lifelinkers. Ranger doesn't just get our combo of Marta and Sarah Ascendant, it can also get other creatures, and we've got a bunch of targets for it too. We get a 1 of Kami of False Hope. This is a really cool one, especially the Proclamation of Rebirth, because it can fog the opponent, slowing down the game, and if you fog every single turn, that's actually enough to beat some decks on its own, or at least make it very hard for them to win. The next card we get is Thraben Inspector. This is a 4 of. It's a card that we kind of like in our opening hand anyway, just because it's a pretty good white 1 drop if you're aiming to take the game long. But you can imagine this Ranger of Aeos getting two Thraben Inspectors, that'll draw you two more cards. That's a really, really grindy play right there, and can help to power out some of the mid-range decks in the format. We then also get a one copy of Walking Ballista, which acts as a removal spell or just a really great mana sink in the late game. A really nice target to have. So beyond Ranger and those sweet synergies, we then have a bunch of controlling cards. We have four copies of Path to Exile, still just about the best removal spell in all of Modern. We then get the single Rune Tailor, which usually acts as a sort of weak removal spell, but sometimes randomly hoses combos or decks like uh, Valakit. We then get a Crucible of Worlds, another super controlling card, which when paired with our eight land destruction lands, the four Field of Ruins, four Ghost Quarters, really good at controlling games, and then we get four Wraths, that's at one Day of Judgment, two Wrath of God, and one Hallowed Burial. We want lots of different names to hedge against Meddling Mage in the Humans deck, and we want Hallowed Burial because it's really good against the Graveyard decks. So it ends up being a pretty nice composition. The only other cards in the deck are Squadron Hawk, this one's really good at grinding. When you pair it with Mist Fail Planes, you can potentially keep putting dead hawks back in the bottom of your deck, tutoring them up with hawks from your hand, and just keep cycling hawks again and again and again and again and again to just really grind players out, kind of like an expensive but more value-filled Lingering Souls. Squadron Hawk, of course, is really good at filling up your hand with white spells, which uh, turns on Marta of Sands, and that's a big reason why it's in the deck. On the other cards in the deck are Archangel Avison, just a really spicy one, really nice way to get your opponent in combat, and finally a single Sun Titan, another very grindy creature, which is just really good top end. So I've got a lot of controlling elements, a lot of uh, fairly grindy stuff going on, and we also get a lot of grindiness and inevitability out of our mana base. So I've already talked about the land destruction and the Mistvale Plains, but beyond that we get two copies of Emeria the Sky Ruin. Now, once this turns online, remembering if it dies we can get it back with Crucible of Worlds, this is a card which basically nothing can outgrind, because it'll just keep getting back 
creatures, any creature, every single turn. You can have it in multiple, it's not legendary, and when it's online, you basically will just win the game. Sideboard, there's a lot less to talk about with this deck. We've just got, you know, a bit of artifact hate, we've got some like, graveyard hate, we've got some search effect hate, we've got the storm hate, we've got some grindy cards, these planeswalkers, an extra avis and an extra wrath and Damping Sphere and Surgical, so nothing particularly unusual or worth talking about, except for maybe this one copy of Hex Parasite. Hex Parasite, importantly, can be tutored by Ranger of Aos, and it is a really, really cool way to answer Planeswalkers, potentially multiple Planeswalkers, and that is the main reason why it appears in this deck. So that's Marta Proc, that's the deck. I'm gonna jump into a league, so let's see how we can go, see if we can replicate the recent success this deck has shown. Alrighty, so this is future luck coming in just to say that this first match I'm going to show you is not part of the main league in the video. This is part of a warm-up league which I made many, many punts throughout, but there's just a nice little match to uh, showcase to you before we jump into the next five matches, which will all be one continuous league. So without further ado, let's get into it. The opponent leads off on Island and Aether Vial. Drawing a 3 of Inspector is quite nice, because I'd rather play that on turn 1 than a Martyr. So I'm guessing we're against Merfolk here? Ooh, and we're against a 1-land Aether Vial hand, so that is pretty good news for us. Pretty sure I'm just going to spend this turn cracking my clue, though. Martyr of Sands does all of gaining 3 life right now, so it seems like a pretty weak option. Opponent does find a second land, and yeah, it's a Silver Gill Adept out of them. And a Spreading Seas on our planes. Let's go ahead and crack my clue now. So that's an irritating one. Hallowed Burial is an interesting draw there. Unfortunately, our lands are all tapped, our white lands now. So we are going to be slowed down quite a lot. I think I may as well attack because I think there's pretty little chance of me getting a decent block in with this Thraven Inspector. Yeah. Yeah, there's the Island Walk we were anticipating. Alright, another Silver Gill Adept. So opponent is certainly uh, doing their best to um, apply a lot of pressure. We're going to fall to 17 here. Can we draw a Ghost Quarter, which isn't bad because it does actually mean we can Ghost Quarter our planes at one point. I'm gonna go ahead and play out my second tap land and my Martyr of Sands and just pass the turn. I'm probably gonna crack this Martyr, but I do not want to reveal a Hallowed Burial if they haven't already emptied their hand. Okay, here's another Master. <sighs> and the other kind of Master, Master of Waves. And that is a lot of elemental tokens. And a Phantasmal Image. Alright, the opponent is going all out and just playing into a Wrath as best as they possibly can for us. And at this point, I can reveal my Hallowed Burial because opponent is tapped out and they can't really do anything. So we get to gain 9 life here before taking 11. Then we get to sweep up that board. Oh yeah, there's the Hallowed Burial. <laughs> that was a good one. Oh wow, the opponent is passing back to us. Oh, this this could not be going any better at this point. We draw a Thraven Inspector, which is pretty cool. Now I get to go ahead and Martyr of Sands and Squadron Hawk. So I've now got exactly five white cards in my hand, so I don't actually want to play out the Saracenant right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and Field of Ruin the opponent's Fairy Conclave on their turn and then sack the Martyr to go up to 30 life. But it's going to Trickster to get my Squadron Hawk tapped down. Okay, and there's another master for them actually, which is weirdly just been played on my main phase. So yeah, with that knowledge, I'm just gonna go ahead and Field of Ruin their Fairy Conclave and play out my Thraven Inspector, I think. Just a card I'd like to trade off with that master, stop it from attacking. Alright, and here comes a big attack out of the opponent. I'm just gonna trade off my Inspector with one of the Elemental Spoke tokens. Go down to seven. Okay, and we drew Flagstones of Troak here, which is not a good one. So I'm going to go ahead and go for the main phase, sacrificing my Martyr. Just want to gain as much life as I can. I'm just going to play out two Squadron Hawks and a Sarah Ascendant here. Oh, wow. Main board Echoing Truth going to blow us out. Jeez, that's that's rough. All right, well, Sarah Ascendant's going to eat another Elemental Token. We just find a Plains. So I'm actually going to lead on cracking my clue here. Find a Thraven Inspector. Just gonna go ahead and play out my Squadron Hawks again. Oh boy, opponent's gonna Silver Gill Adept revealing a Master of the Pearl Trident. Those are some really strong draws. So weirdly our opponent's not getting into their Master even though it now has Island Walk, but I will happily trade off for two Elemental Tokens here. Okay, and we draw a Rune Tailor. I'm gonna lead off and cracking a clue. We find Path to Exile, that's a pretty good one. Alright, so we Squadron Hawk here. It's gonna Rune Tailor, I think I just named Silver Gill here? Doesn't especially matter. 
And with that, I'll just pass the turn. Okay, opponent's found another Island Walk Lord. I'm gonna go ahead and Ghost Quarter my Plains, which has the Spreading Seas on it. Opponent is going to Merfolk Tr Trickster. So we're just gonna chump Squadron Hawk, Path, a Master, take three here. We draw three, but Inspector. So we'll play that out. Sack the clue. Okay, that's a Walking Ballista. Hmm. And the opponent's got four relevant creatures in play. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put a Squadron Hawk in the bottom of my library, then play a Squadron Hawk to get it back. So we're obviously dead to a Spreading Seas. The opponent's playing off the top of their library. It's a Curse Catcher this time around. I can live with that one. And they probably don't want to attack with their Lord here, so I'm guessing we're not gonna take much damage here. Probably just the Tricksters. Ooh, or not. Well, I think I'm taking six. Okay, and we drew a path. So now I get to cast our Ballista for three and hold up our path to exile. Not gonna use it now, which should be fine. Really want the option to block with my Ballista and then shoot some creatures down. All right, here comes the big swing. So I'll line up our blocks, kill Master, kill Silvergill, and yeah, I'll kill the uh, Curse Catcher as well. I suppose I'm gonna use all my mana and path of Trickster here. Ooh, nice. That's an Archangel Abyssin. That's a pretty good one. Okay, I think I'm gonna take a risk and not Hawk and instead try to Crucible. We'll grab Ghost Core out of our bin. And now we're just really hoping to dodge Vile. Yep. Okay, cool. All right, here's the opponent's attack. So we're going to float mana with and then Ghost Quarter our Flagstone. Grab a Plains and a Mist Veil Plains. Flash an Abyssin. All right, opponent, do you have the Trickster? Oh, wow, we get to make the block. Okay, we've cleared the board. We're one land away from bringing Amiria online as well. Opponents playing out an Ether Vial. And another Ether Vial. Oh, wow. Oh, we might have done it. And we draw a Sarah Ascendant. That is A-OK -okay with me. So now I get to play that out. That means we have two white creatures in play. So we get to bring back the Squadron Hawks. Now we get to replay a Plains out of our bin, which will bring Amiria online. Play out Squadron Hawk. Shoot up the two Squadron Hawks we just put on the bottom. Play out Squadron Hawk. And now we're the one attacking. Oh my lord, it's been a rough one through Triple Master of Waves. But I think we might have finally gotten there. All right, Miria online. I think first order of business is going to be getting back Marta of Sands to get above two points of life. I can draw another Sarah Ascendant, which is great. We get to rebuy our Squadron Hawk. Black spends from the graveyard. Squadron Hawk's gonna come into play. Shoot up another Squadron Hawk. Now I'll just get in with two creatures. Going up to three life, reveal our hand. Go up to nine life. Oh yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> uh, kill all of our Squadron Hawks. Oops. Good news is that the uh, flipped Everson is still lethal, just like our board was without it. All right, Amiri's back in line. We get to grab our Thraven Inspector back. Draw a Martyr of Sands. And are we finally going to get the win? Swing for six. All right, opponent's activating Vile. It's a Master of Waves, which does not fly. Last time I checked. And it's an Everson from the opponent. So we'll crack our clue, see if we can find something to target it to get out of the way. Nope. Let's get ready to rebuy our Squadron Hawks. While we have the Mistvale Plains ability active, play out the Hawk, get two more Hawks in hand, play out Armada of Sands, gain nine life, and play an Ascendant. Opponent has Vile for Silvergill here. We're finally at the point of the game where I think I'm going to take two from an Elemental and just be aggressive. Get our upkeep, we'll get back our Avacyn, which will give our creatures indestructible. There's a Ranger of Aeos, finally, a really good card. Opponent's not going to block. I'm gonna go ahead and Mistvale Plains my Ballista back into my deck. Cast a Ranger of Aeos. Grab Ballista and... I don't know, let's say a Kami of False Hope. Cast Ballista for three. And that is finally, finally lethal. Holy moly, that took a long time. And that's game one. Oh boy. Alrighty, so sideboarding for Merfolk, I think we're actually reasonably well set up to handle them. Um... I definitely want to bring out my Sun Titan and my Crucible of Worlds. The question is, what do I want to bring in? A Cleansing Nova, definitely. Then one of either Avacyn or Elspeth, I think, is the answer. And I'm going to lean towards Elspeth, just because it's harder for them to interact with, even though it is very slow. But in fairness, Avacyn's pretty slow too. And we'll try it like this. All right, and we've got, again, a uh, opener with no lands in it. Ugh, and a really, really ugly looking six that we're going to keep. Have to bottom a Wrath because we have no real mana. That's going to lead on a turn one Relic. 
Okay, and that's a good draw. And we do get to name Human without Cavern of Souls, which will let us cast both Marta and Sarah Ascendant. And yeah, I'll just play a turn one Marta. This is pretty exciting because this Marta will gain me 12 life and will let me put a 6-6 six, six Flyer into play on turn two, which is pretty powerful. We draw Path, which isn't bad. And let's show our opponent what's going on as we gain 15 life. And we'll put our Sarah Ascendant into play. And let's see if this nut draw is going to get the job done. <laughs> We're just going to exile Armada. Uh, Relic is good against this game's grindy game plan of Proclamation of Rebirth, Crucible of Worlds, but I feel like those are not usually going to be our best cards against Merfolk. Of course, we ground them out last game with um, rebuying our Squadron Hawks over and over again. But now that we've actually got a powerful draw, things are very different. All right, that's a Squadron Hawk that we can't cast. In fact, the only card we can cast in our hand at the moment is this other Sarah Ascendant. Ooh, now it's decision time. So the Sarah Ascendant turns our... Sorry, the Trickster turns our Ascendant into a 1-1. Ugh, uh, this feels really bad. I think I'm going to Ghost Quarter myself so I can path this, so I can just keep my Ascendant in play. It feels really bad, though. So yeah, that's gonna work. And it is going to mean that we're going to keep a 6-6 six, six flyer in play, and we will still have the mana to cast our other 6-6 six, six flyer. So I think that's definitely worth it. It's just a, a bit of a feel-bad moment when we have no mana to get rid of our mana. Okay, and we do have to be concerned that our opponent has another one, because they've just passed back to us without doing anything, which I assume means we're going to get trickstered here. But I can't just not attack, and I do have a backup, which is the important thing. So yeah, here's the trickster. It's going to eat this Ascendant, of course. But uh, can they beat another Ascendant? And as soon as we start drawing some land, I'll feel really good about this game. Oh wow, Spreading Seas now only land is really brutal. Okay, what do we draw? Path to Exile, that's not a land. We are going to connect for 6 though, and that is going to put us up to 41. Oh no. Harbinger of the Tides, okay, we need to draw land or we're just going to lose. Okay, down to 38. Come on lands, come on deck, you can do it. Okay, it's a land. It's a scary one though because we're going to lose our life by taking a minimum of 8 damage here which is going to put us down to 30. And then with Island Walk, we're not going to have any 6-6s six anymore and our opponent is now playing a Master of Waves, yikes. Just need to keep hitting more lands. Right, come on lands. Oh, uh, that's not a land. Um, I mean we only have one option here, we have to path Master. And that is going to clean up the elementals, but opponent's still going to have the Mutavolt as well, so we're going to be hit for 11, and we're on a 3 turn clock now. And I've got another Master too. So it looks like we're going to game 3 here. We do usually lean very heavily on our Wraths in this sort of matchup, but of course, um, the only Wrath we've seen in this game we've had to scratch at the bottom because we've been looking for lands all game. And yeah, the opponent's just going crazy here, so this is going to be game. Yeah, there's Wrath, but no lands. Alright, time to try again. Alrighty, on the play for game number three, I'm gonna keep this hand. Elspeth would eventually be good in the future. We get a turn one Marta. Opponent's gonna lead on a Fairy Conclave. The only good field of ruin target in their deck. Ooh, and we just drew a Sarah Ascendant. Hello. Alright, so I'm gonna go for it again. Gain 12, play Sarah Ascendant. And you know, they did a pretty good job last game, but there's always a chance that they won't be able to beat it. Okay, then passing the turn feels a bit sad because that means probably Trix is coming in. So now what? I'm gonna go ahead and Field of Ruin their Fairy Conclave to lead things off this turn. And I think I have to attack even though I expect I'm getting Trixed. But no, no Trickster and we get in. So it was just a bluff from the opponent. They're gonna end step Echoing Truth out Ascendant, but that is not especially scary, so this is looking really good right now. There's a Squadron Hawk, which is also looking really good in this matchup. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and run out my Ascendant again. It results, we now get to go Squadron Hawk and find three more Hawks. And the opponent's just gonna keep passing the turn. Well, we've got a two turn clock right now, so we'll see what they've got as we draw a Maria, which is nice as we keep hitting our land drops. All right, so they found a Harbinger of Tides. It's gonna buy them a turn. But they're still not really making any uh, headway towards winning the game right now. They're just treading water while we're piling the pressure on and continuing to grow our board. So Ascendant's back in play. We'll get another Hawk in play too. Okay, here's a Silver Gill revealing an Island Walk Lord, and a Sorceress Spyglass, which is interesting. 
I guess is in to try and name Mara, but in this case, gonna name Elspeth, I can almost assure you. No, gonna name Mara, okay, that's interesting. I do like Ballista a lot here. All right, we're just gonna bash for eight. Play out a Ballista on two, play out a Mata just as a one mana one one. And the opponent's doing something, maybe they're not dead? All right, it's a Silvergill Adept. I guess they need a Harbinger of Tides to stay alive for one more turn. But even that doesn't do it right now. So they do Harbinger, which will bounce my Sarah Ascendant, but between my Flyers and my Ballista, I should be able to do exactly five damage here. Yeah, and I'll trade off my one mana one one for their two one, I suppose. Drawing another Sarah Ascendant just because. Yeah, no, opponent's got no interaction for the Hawks. They're down to three. And that means we can put a counter onto our Ballista. And that is the match. Alrighty, so we are able to beat Merfolk. Thank God. Thanks to the power of the Murder of Sands Sarah Ascendant combo. After some sketchy draws. But that is a win and I will take it. Hello everybody and welcome back to another match with Martaproc and we have a very slow opener here. Ranger Vest is so good though, I'm on the play. I'm gonna try to keep it, hopefully I draw something cheap to play in the first couple of turns, otherwise I could be in a bit of trouble. It's a Celestial Colony, it looks like we're against Blue-White Control. Be curious to see how our grind goes here. Good news is that if we don't get to cast anything before Ranger, and we won't, uh, that they won't have cryptic mana yet by that time, so worst case scenario is a logic knot or something. And if they don't have that, we'll be in really good shape. Alrighty, back over to us opponent not playing anything yet. We're gonna run out our first Ranger of AL, see if it resolves. And it does! Oh wow, I did not expect that. Uh, so in a grind here, I feel like it's very unlikely that we close out the game quickly if I grab a Marta and a Sarah Ascendant. So I think I'm actually just going to grab double Thraben Inspector and set up to be as grindy as I possibly can. Mm, or maybe Inspector Ballista, because Ballista is a really good way to pressure Planeswalkers too. I'll grab the two Inspectors, we'll see how that goes. And opponent's gonna Vendillion click us on our end step, which is okay. We'll see whether they're after our... Don't know what they want to take, really. Maybe the Ranger of Aos, probably? Yes, yeah, let us keep the hand, okay. Alright, here's a Jace the Mind Sculptor. And it's over to us. Opponent just fate sealed with their Jace. So now I'm gonna get to resolve another Ranger of Aos here. I will search. This time I'm going to grab a Walking Ballista. And I think at this point just has to be another Inspector. We'll attack Jace, no doubt trade creatures here with our opponent. Yep, the trade happens. And we'll go for that main phase 2 Thraben Inspector, get a clue. Alright, all the Planeswalkers are out on show today. And the opponent is brainstorming, so there are a few risks. It could be that they're going for a combat terminus here. Could be that they're going to be leaving up Logic Knot, we'll have to see. Oh, Cavern of Souls is a nice one. That is a really good way to get it on Logic Knot. I'm just going to go straight into combat, and I think I want to get rid of Teferi before Jace, so I'll go after him. Okay, just a path on my ranger. Get a planes. Hmm. It's now in an interesting spot. I can always name something with Kevin later. I don't think I want to use it this turn now. And yeah, I think I'm just going to deploy all my cheap threats. So my Thraven Inspectors get the clues going. Chuck out the Kami. But this is very scary. These two planeswalkers working in tandem is... Really, really troublesome. Ugh, that's a detention sphere, and we've got three Thraben Inspectors in play, so that feels... that feels bad. Old versions of this deck did use to run Oblivion Ring and Banishing Light, but this deck list isn't, unfortunately. Which is gonna mean I can't really interact with that detention sphere. Path to Exile is not one I wanted to find. Okay, and we draw Proclamation of Rebirth. Not a good one. Not a good one at all. Do you get to attack Teferi here? I'm just going to let that through, which does mean we can now cash in our Ballista to take it out. It's named Construct with Ballista. Of course, big concern here is that our opponent probably just has more Planeswalkers where this came from. But I'm absolutely going to kill this one while I can. Okay, opponent's going to go after our Cavern, which makes sense. And a Field of Ruin, okay. Opponent's sort of helping us out a bit. Our next project's really to um get to the point where we have seven planes in play and can turn on Amiria, although they could always field of ruin it. They might not give us the time to uh, protect it. It's very possible I should have been more aggressive early with my rangers and not just gotten those Thraven Inspectors, but 
We'll see how this plans out. Search was counter for the opponent. It's a bit of a scary one, but we do have the Ghost Quarters ready to go. Crack a clue on the end step. Another field of run, okay. And a Mata of Sands. That, that one's not terrible. We get to get in at chase here. But it's probably got Cryptic Command, so I don't really want to Sun Titan. There's also no nothing to get back right now, so there's no value from it. I'm probably won't going to want to be using like Ghost Quarters and Field of Ruin this turn as well. I think I'm going to lead off with Marta of Sands here. And just pass the turn. Yeah, and the opponent's going to go ahead and go after our Amiri here, which is no surprise. We do have another one to draw into as well as a Crucible of Worlds. I'm going to use the mana to uh, draw a card off the clue. Hallowed Burial is not going to get anything done in this matchup. Damn. That's a Teferi. So the card draw and brainstorms continue. And we're again faced with the problem of just not having any pressure on the opponent as they continue to go off here. I am going to go after their Colonnade here. The opponent still gets to hold up Cryptic Mana, which is really frustrating. We just find another Field of Ruin, which is not especially relevant. Oh, I suppose we'll attack Jace because it's closer to dead. And yeah, we have no way to get Sun Titan back once it disappears. So I really want to get a uh, second spell I want to resolve in the same turn before I cast it, ideally. And it's just Fate Sealed me, left the card on top. And they've played a Crucible of Worlds of their own, which is annoying. Even so, I am going to go ahead and Field of Ruin their Colonnade here. I want to shuffle my library because obviously something craps on top. Alright, we find Squadron Hawk, which is pretty good in the matchup overall. Although I'd be lying if I said I was super excited about playing it. But I will go ahead and cast it, and grab his friends. And I'm just going to keep one Squadron Hawk in my hand in case the opponent terminuses. So that I can then just uh, get them all back. And yeah, opponent's going to start taking out our Ghost Quarters where we've got all of our basic lands in play, but I think operating off 8 lands isn't the worst thing in the world. Crucible's pretty good in our deck, but it's not especially good against us. Yeah, and here's the Terminus. I am going to respond to the Terminus by revealing all of my hand except for this Sun Titan, just in case the opponent doesn't know about the Sun Titan. Also sacrifice Kami of False Hope. Worth noting the opponent has transformed their Kanta and they're going to go ahead and kill our Ghost Quarter here. And they're just going to keep going off. So yeah, I don't think we can beat two Planeswalkers and an Azkanta going at the same time. Oh, well, let's see if we can resolve Squadron Hawk again. Now, gets countered, makes sense. But it still has Cryptic Manor up though, which is not ideal. I think I'm basically going to go for the Sun Titan though. Yeah, and that's going to get countered too, of course. The one thing we do have going for us is... Uh, Saracen it, but it's not really going to matter because this Teferi is going to ultimate, and the Teferi ultimate is what's going to win this game for the opponent. Once they start exiling all of our planes, we just... I mean, that's that, that, that's game over, right? And the opponent's actually got a found a Ghost Quarter of their own, so they're going to start killing off our planes thanks to their Crucible. So I think we're basically dead no matter what we do at this point. So I'll take one more draw step than concede. So Flagstones is the draw step, and there's the concession. So good news is here, against Black and Troll, we've got a lot of cards in the main board that are not very good. So we get to bring these out. So these are all of our sweepers, three of our four paths, Kami of False Hope, Ruined Halo, they all get to come out. And we get to bring in some Planeswalkers, Archangel Avacyn, a Disenchant, Hex Parasite, Surgical Extraction, a whole lot of goodies. And we get to try it on the play this time, and we have an opening hand that is pretty reasonable. Alright, we get to lead off with a turn one Thraben Inspector. But it's just passing back to us. We draw a Ghost Quarter, not a particularly good land in this spot. So we'll get in for one here, and I'll play out the Martyr of Sands. I'm not planning to sacrifice it yet, but I'll keep it in play for a bit. Alright, and the turn is going to be ours again. We draw planes, which is fine. Fourth land is good. Get to bash for two, and just go for another three with Inspector. Okay, but it's playing a land, passing to us. We get to crack a clue, find another three but Inspector. Thraben Inspector Tribal over here. Alright, we'll bash in for three. And I'm just going to play out a Martyr and plan to crack a clue here. And so we'll crack that clue. We find Hex Parasite, a good one to have access to. And an Emiria Sky Ruin. So we're hitting our land drop, which is always good. Alright, this is what we want to see. Opponent tapping our team down beginning a combat because they're just getting scared of the one mana one power creature beats 
that's going to clear the way for us to resolve our Ranger of Aeos. And I think we learnt from last game that we're probably not going to outgrind the opponent, so I'm just going to grab... Yeah, I think it's safe to grab two Sarah Ascendants. Yeah, Hexpress, that's already in hand for Planeswalkers. So we'll do that. Opponent plays Crucible World, that'll let them hit their land drop, but it won't let them get any nearer to escaping our pressure. As we get to draw a Cavern of Souls, not a bad one if we want to resolve all these humans in our hand. And we're bashing for seven here, which is most opponents' life total. They're going to path our Ranger, that's fine. And they're going to go down to eight, it looks like. Alright, well I'm going to go ahead and name Human on my cavern here. And I'll plonk a Sarah Ascendant into play. And a Thraven Inspector. We could disenchant the Crucible, but I'd much rather hit a Tension Sphere at this point. Ooh, worth noting, I should have sacrificed a Martyr before I played out those cards, because I don't actually have enough to get my life total above 30 right now. So hopefully we can draw a couple of white spells to make up for that. That's a white spell. And so is that. That's good. That's good. Well, I guess we're going to combat. We better go for it. Looks like another Cryptic. Yep, gonna tap us down, draw a card. So while I tap down, I'll take the opportunity to resolve a Squadron Hawk, grab the rest of the Hawks out of my deck, and just pass the turn with seven cards in hand and a lot of pressure in play. Alright, here's a Terminus out of the opponent, so we'll get to gain a whole lot of life in response. I think I'm okay with revealing my whole hand here. So we go up to 56, put our guys back in any order, draw a Ghost Quarter, which isn't exciting. We do now get to get the Squadron Hawk that just got put on the bottom back in our hand. So I'm going to play out three Hawks and a Sarah Ascendant here. The Ascendant's a lethal threat on its own. Alright, it's another hard cast Terminus for the opponent. Turn goes back to us, we find another Sarah Ascendant. We'll go ahead and uncounterably play another Squadron Hawk. Or Sarah Ascendant, rather. Into a Squadron Hawk, which could be countered. But if he resolves, he gets three of his buddies. He resolves. And yes, Quadrant Hawk, pretty good against Terminus. So there's another Hawk coming into play, and I think I'll leave it at two Hawks in play this time. Just so that if they sweep the border again and counter a Hawk, I don't feel sad. Okay, it's a Teferi. Teferi's just going to tuck the Sarah Ascendant. So we just drew a Walking Ballista, which could very soon become lethal. I don't want to take any unnecessary risks though. I'm going to send both Hawks at Teferi, just make sure that that gets off the table. We're just going to look for a Terminus, and they miss. So Teferi's down. We're just going to play another uncounterable Ascendant, and I think for now we'll leave it at that. But it's not really generating any card advantage right now, so as long as I'm keeping the pressure on, I'd rather play it safe. Alright, so the opponent's going to Field of Ruin our Cavern of Souls. I'm going to respond by going after their Crucible of Worlds, because I don't want them to be able to then get my Emiria. Annoyingly, this means I'm going to shuffle away my next Sarah Ascendant, so the opponent tucked earlier. The opponent suspends an Ancestral Vision and has a Timely Reinforcements, which is going to get full value. Ooh, that's a Gideon, not bad. Alright, let's get in here. Okay, opponent's taking 8 this turn, down to 4, up to 62, and we'll see if we can resolve this Gideon. Remand! Huh, alright, I'll try again. Resolves. Ancestral is still three more turns away, opponents down to three cards in hand. Our board is miles ahead of them, life total is miles ahead of them. Uh, probably should have plus Gideon, they are going to be able to pick it off with this colonnade here. And the fact that they're still in the game means they're either going to opt for a Terminus on my turn, or maybe Cryptic to tap my team. Alright, there's the opt. Alright, no miracles are happening. And we're attacking. Oh, they found a Snapcaster. Right, that's that's okay. So that means I get to path, and they'll be taking two in the air still, and then I can walk and blister them for lethal, unless their final card happens to be a counter spell, which seems very unlikely. All right, I'll play Ballista for three, leaving up three mana, just need some mana leak, and that should be the game. All right, all right. Whew. So as long as we can keep the pressure on, we can uh, we can squeeze one out against Blue Eye Control. So let's see if we can get a repeat performance for the final game of this series. Ugh. Look at this opening hand. Is this something I'm ever going to keep? Hmm. If we draw any land in the first couple of turns, we can uh, feel the ruin to get another planes. That becomes a bit more reasonable, but I don't think this is worth it. 
Rubbish. Similar hand, but I think I'm keeping this one. I think it's a little better, actually, and I get the scry. Really need a planes. Not a disenchant. Turn one planes would make this hand pretty good. All right, but I've got turn one ancestral, which is pretty scary. We have turn one planes. Okay, that's a, that's a start. That's a start. Okay, they've just got a colonnade for turn two. We have another planes, which is great because that means we'll hit our land drop next turn, uh, and for turn four rather, we get to get in for one. Okay, opponents having no issues making their land drops either. Okay, we crack a clue, find Elspeth, which might eventually be good. In the meantime, we'll try to... Well, we'll go to combat first. Then we'll try to stick this Crucible. It should be a pretty good card in the long term. Although it will take a long time to make its mark on this game, because this opponent's deck will play many, many basic lands. Okay, it resolves. Here's a Vendillion click from the opponent. We've got... Double Ranger, which is probably the best card in our hand. Proclamation of Rebirth could be good eventually. Forecast is a very powerful ability. And they take the Elspeth. Fair enough. All right, do they have their fourth land? They have a Crucible of Worlds. Okay, and they're gonna use that to make their fourth land drop. Interesting, interesting, interesting. That is gonna clear the way for us to stick a Ranger of Aos, though. The only bad thing right now is that the opponent is going to be able to resolve Ancestral Vision on their turn. So now, what do we want? Hmm. That is the question. kind of want to get my two artifacts first. So I'm going to do that. I think they're probably the best at the moment. Obviously, Hex Parasite is uh, good at sniping Planeswalkers. And Blister's reasonable at that. It's also very good at sniping Vendillion Clicks. Here comes the Ancestral. Feeling a bit... Uh, Envious of our opponent, they've effectively drawn three lands. Okay, there's a Baneslayer Angel. They've effectively drawn a few lands off of their uh, Crucible of Worlds and Flooded Strand combo. Yeah, the damage that's being done by this click is really painful because it's going to be very hard for us to gain enough life to uh, ever take this on in aerial combat. That's a real problem. Also worth noting, we sideboarded out Kami of False Hope and most of our removal. Kami would be a really good target right about now, especially with the Proclamation of Rebirth in the bin. Hmm. Well, in any case, I feel like we have to resolve the range while we can. Grab Martyr of Sands and probably Sarah Ascendant and get that Martyr in play. Obviously, we can't attack into a first striking, life-linking 5-5 Angel. Okay, it's a Jace the Mind Sculptor from the opponent. In all honesty, that's not really one of the cards where super scared of it right this second. This does also put the opponent in a spot where if they were to attack with their Bane Slayer, they put their Jace at risk. Okay, we draw flagstones. So we'll send our two rangers at Jace, three of inspector at the opponent's face. Yeah, no attack with the Martyr of Sands this turn. Okay, and that just happens, that's interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and gain nine life now off the Martyr, and there's a good chance we're gonna start forecasting this Martyr back every turn from this point on to keep our life total nice and high. So this could be the last chance I have to cast spells in a while, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cast out my spells. Sarah Ascendant and Walking Blister are the ones I wanna cast most of all right now. All right, Blister's getting remanded. Opponent's dealing big damage in the air. And with our life total so low, we're definitely forecasting this Martyr. Squadron Hawk's a pretty good draw. We get to attack with our team here. Ugh, and the opponent's gonna go ahead and Cryptic Command to bounce our Ghost Quarter. Which is gonna force me to go ahead and sacrifice my Martyr of Sands right away, because I want to gain that life. They're gonna opt. And they've got a Path for my Ascendant. Which is pretty strong, but I do... The land is very valuable too. I've already played a land for the turn, so of course we can't replay the Ghost Quarter. And now we're both very even on clock, and it's going to be a pretty even race at the moment, although if I can stick my Squadron Hawk at some point, I'll start getting a heck of a lot of life. Oh wow, an opponent's just stuck a second Giant Angel, oh my lord. Alright, so we're taking a lot, they're gaining a lot. But we do get to keep forecasting here. All right, we draw planes, and we're just going to have to pass the turn. Get to keep gaining life with our Marta. Just gonna try to get some of that F6 value. Okay, opponents firing up Colonnade. They're gonna bash with everything, which is gonna put us all the way down to one life. Oh no. 
So I misclicked and didn't forecast my proc, but I think we're okay. We'll go for a squadron hawk here. Okay, that resolves. I'm gonna try to hard cast my proc now. That's gonna get countered. Yeah, that's um really frustrating because that means we're gonna lose the game just because I didn't get the forecast going. It would have been getting nine life and it would have been taking more damage than that. So I suppose we lose no matter what I do because if I do manage to um forecast the proc uh, that they can then just counter squadron hawk and I'm not getting enough life to stay alive at that point. I mean, I can survive one more turn right now probably. <laughs> Well, not even. I could I could hardcast this and resolve this. Gain 12 life. Take uh, more than 12 damage in the air <laughs> uh, on the backswing. Or I could play two hawks and chump two guys. But unfortunately, that's going to uh, wrap up this one. It was a close one. A close loss to blue-white. Um, but I'm just going to have to click that concede button and move on to the next match. We are on the play here with Martaproc, and we've got a hand that we can keep. It's a bit slow, but many hands with this deck are a bit slow, and this one's got a few sweet things going on. Let's hope Crucible is good, eh? So we've got a basic land in our first turn and nothing else. And it looks like the opponent's on burn, which is the kind of time where we'd really like to be getting Marta. We have a Walking Blister on top. That's interesting. Suppose I better play this out. I'd much rather play a ranger on four anyway. It's not like it's a white spell, so it's not going to help with Marta. So I suspect that chumping a goblin guide's about as much fire as I'll get out of it anyway. All right, opponent's getting in. They find us a ghost quarter. And I'm just going to block and ping them here. Yeah, and they've got an idol on, which puts me in a spot where I feel like this crucible isn't even worth casting. Because it is very, very weak. So I'm just going to plan to take a lot of damage here cast my Ranger of Aos, get double Martyr next turn, and hope that between the Martyrs and Hallowed Burial we can stabilize. So we draw more land off this Goblin Guide, but this hand doesn't really have a shortage of land. It does have a shortage of white spells, though, from which we can gain life with our Martyrs. Ooh, and the opponent's playing a second Eidolon. Okay, so this Hall Hallowed Burial is probably going to be pretty good. And it's nice that range is not going to hurt us when we cast it. So we drew Flagstones, I'm just going to play out the Flagstones, thin out my deck a little bit here. Grabbing Mistvale Plains, and it's time to deploy the Ranger. Alright, Ranger, you're gonna grab Marta Marta, but we're already getting pretty low. Opponent's got four cards in hand, and we're basically priced into casting this Hallowed Burial next turn, so I'm not feeling very good about this. Alright, so we've got a Kami on top. Does that change anything? Hmm. So I'm going into 10 here. If I plan to play anything other than my Hallowed Burial, I should ideally be trying to take out an Eidolon so I don't take four damage from it. So I guess I'm blocking an Eidolon. Problem with trying to actually play a Marta though is we'd be so in trouble if they have a Skullcrack. They just suspend a Rift Bolt, so we can't die on our turn right now. So if I play Marta, I'm going down to 8 and I'm trying to gain 9, which would put me to 17. That would be amazing. And if I just Hallowed Burial, they'll have no creatures in play, but they'll have 4 cards in hand with a Rift Bolt and Suspend. They've missed their last couple land drops, so they probably have 4 spells, and I can't imagine any combination of four spells that doesn't kill us from seven. So for that reason, I think I just have to go for Marta and just hope for the best. And I think that means sacrificing it immediately so that if they skull crack, I can play another one and then try to gain more life on their turn. But if this is a skull crack in response, I'm basically just dead. Please be a Boris Charm or a Helix. It's a Taka's command. I was thinking that maybe this is just for destructive revelry in the sideboard, but no, they're playing... They're playing green properly, so that means Marta does nothing. I have to play another Marta and just hope that I can gain some life in my opponent's upkeep here. And we're almost certainly dead here, right? Because I have to sack the Marta now, otherwise I'm dead to this Rift Bolt. And anything, like, I'm dead to anything, basically. And that's something. So yeah, the life gain deck, not actually taking the game on off burn. I feel like if we don't have Marta in our opener, it actually gets pretty tricky by the, by the looks of things. And geez, looking at the sideboard, I really don't have much here. So it looks like the deck builder is just relying on being able to cast Marta against burn. And as a result, we've got almost no tools to deal with it. I want to cut these cards, uh, Hallowed Burial, Sun Titan, and Crucible, because they're just so slow. We just do not have time for that sort of stuff. But all I have to bring in is like another 5 drop, a 4 drop, and a 3 drop. Just like the 3 drop is just a 2-1 blocker, right? So I'm not feeling good about this, really. And it's like, Marta of Sands is not really a card you can mulligan for either because you need to have a full hand for it to even be good. So I'm looking at this opening hand and it's like, I think it's a keep. 
but it's very unimpressive. If we happen to draw a martyr, though, Squadron Hawk makes it really good, so we've at least got that going for us, and the fact that we'll um, be able to put up some blockers is nice. So I'll go ahead and Thraven Inspector. I'm just going to lead him a Swift Spear, which this stonewalls for a turn, so that's nice. Ugh, we just drew Squadron Hawk? That is so disgusting. I'm going to cast a Squadron Hawk, because the problem with playing Squadron Hawk is in multiples they are horrendously bad. I have no interest in attacking here because I'm not going to be racing my opponent. This is not like me trying to out-tempo them. Alright, and they're going to Searing Blaze away the Inspector. And I don't think I even block here because I want to actually be able to put up some blockers next turn. So we draw a Ghost Quarter, which doesn't help with anything. We play a Squadron Hawk. And we desperately need to draw a Ranger of Aos, but even then they've got effectively eight Skullcracks. And now I'm in a spot where I feel like I, like, what do I even do here? Like, if I double block, a spell kills my birds and puts me in a world of hurt, and they almost certainly have a spell or they probably don't even make this attack, so I feel like I can't even block, but that means I'm dying faster. And yeah, there's a Searing Blaze. And it's terrible for me having not blocked, but it would be even worse if I did block. So we draw a Wrath. I'm just going to crack my clue. We find Ranger of Aos. Okay. Alright, well with those draws, I'm just going to pass the turn, plan on chumping a Swift Spear. The opponent's hit four lands, so that bodes well. Alright, so we'll go ahead and play Flagstones out that we just drew. Grab Mistvale vale Plains. Play Ranger of Aos. And I think we grab Double Martyr here. Don't actually want to play one until I have enough mana to sack it as well. So we're getting Helixed, and we're very likely dead here. We'll have to see what our opponent's got. Okay, well, they're attacking. I've, I'm definitely blocking now. Okay, they're gonna Helix us. Got two cards left in hand, we're on four life. What do they have? All right, the turn is ours, so I'm gonna Martyr here. Uh, this time I'm gonna play a second Martyr, because gaining 12 is plenty, and I want to guarantee some life gain here. So if they've got a skull crack right now, I can get around it. So now that I've got both in play, I'll just go for the immediate sack and try to gain my 4 life. Or my 12 life, rather. Alright, opponent's gonna deny me of that, as expected, but I do get to gain 12 life in response to this attacker's command. And I think I'll run out a Squadron Hawk for good measure. So I do have enough mana to start forecasting my Martyrs as well, so I can start doing that next turn. Before I forecast though, I'm gonna go ahead and Ghost Quarter my Flagstones, thin out my deck a little bit. Grab my second Misfail Planes. And now we get Martyr every turn. Alright, and they're just gonna Helix the Martyr, which is sweet, because it means it's not going at my face, I've got one card left in hand, and I'm at 13. So we're now at a point where I'm feeling pretty safe, pretty stable. So it looks like we're gonna get a game 3. I'm not even gonna attack, they're at 23, it's such a slow clock, I'm just gonna not really do anything, hold back, go full conservative mode. And a nice thing about forecasting a martyr every turn is that I don't even have to cast a spell, so Eidolon doesn't hurt me. And whew, I was feeling pretty down about this after game one, but this is a super powerful engine, and at right now it's a minimum 12, draw a white spell, 15 life gain per turn. Eventually we stick a 6-6 six, six life linker. So that is the plan. That's what we want to happen. Man, was it a rough ride to get there, though. And yeah, we really, I don't think, have anything else uh, to bring in here. So we'll just have to run it back and hope that we can get another Martyr draw. Oh, that's a Martyr of Sands, and that's a Squadron Hawk. Okay, okay. I'm going to lead in a Swift Spear. I'm probably leading on a tap land because I don't want to get my Martyr killed without getting any value out of it. Um, or we could draw Thraben Inspector. Yeah, that's. Th I'm, I'm going to play that one. Doesn't feel too bad to lose that in the face of a Swift Spear. So we'll get our block in. And yeah, our opponent's gonna bolt us, but that means we just gain two life with this Inspector, so that's sweet. Opponent suspends a Rift Bolt. Seems like as good a turn as any to stick a Squadron Hawk and pick up three of his friends. So we'll have to discard here. I suppose I'm discarding... Doesn't really matter. Amiri? I don't think Amiri is ever happening. Alright, opponent, please tap out for me. I really want to gain a lot of life next turn. It's a Goblin Guide. What's on top? Proclamation of Rebirth. That's a pretty good one. We'll chump hawk here. Right opponent, play a spell. No spells. Hmm, that makes life harder. Suppose we're playing Martyr, and just a Mist Veil Plains this turn. Leave up the activation. This puts my sp opponent in a spot where they can't really cast anything here, or I gain 12. Okay, I guess I just gain 12, that's alright. So that means we're down to 19. We draw Field of Ruin off Goblin Guide. And yeah, with them being low on cards at this point in the game, it makes me feel really, really good about where we're at. I think now's a good time to blister on two. This lets me block the Swiss Spear and kill the Goblin Guide. 
So here comes the attack. We've got a Ranger of Aos on top, another one I'd really like to draw. All right, and the opponent's gonna attack his command now, which seems really dicey. So they felt like they needed to cast a spell before damage happened because um, my Blister could eat their Swift Spear. But they could have also used Attackers to Command to save their Goblin Guide, because I was very likely going to ping them. So, I mean, this tells me that they almost certainly don't have a spell other than maybe another Attackers Command in their hand. A non-creature spell, that is. Yeah, alright. Well, it's Ranger Veos time. As we'll grab a Marta and a Sarah Ascendant. And I'm just going to pass the turn. And yeah, the opponent scoops it up. They know basically all their hand, and they know they can't beat it, so... Looks like the plan does work at least some of the time against Burn, but yeah, it's all about this card, Martyr of Sands. And of course, Ranger of Aos helps a lot, but it's just all about the Martyr. And when we get it, well, suddenly Burn looks like a breeze, so a little inconsistent, but it works, and it's sweet when it does. Alrighty, we're back with some more Martyr proc, and this is a very Martyr proc kind of hand. Just Martyr of Sands, Squadron Hawk. And what is this? Stomping Ground Search for tomorrow. So it looks like we're playing against a Valakit deck of some description. I'm just going to kick things off with a Thraven Inspector myself. I don't think we can gain enough life for it to be particularly relevant here. I might be wrong about that. We have a 1 of Rune Tailor, which would be sweet. But this turn I think I'm just playing out a Martyr of Sands, attacking with Thraven Inspector and playing out another Thraben Inspector. I kind of just want to get as much out of my hand as possible before I Squadron Hawk. And what we really want, I think, in this game is a Sarah Ascendant so that we can start getting some good pressure down on the opponent. But for now, here's Thrabes. Because, yeah, one mana one ones just... I don't think they're going to cut it on their own. Or one mana one twos. Ooh, they're going to bolt our Martyr. Fair enough. We didn't particularly care about protecting him because we do have a backup in hand. And we draw Path. Well, Path's not an exciting draw, but we will get to start Squadron Hawking, as the opponent's going to have another turn of the good old Block and Sack with Tri Builder. They are getting up to six mana, though, this turn, which is not a good spot for me. Our game plan feels way too fair right about now. All right, here come the Hawks. Good news is we have Path for a Titan, so it at least does that much for us. Yeah, and his summoner's packed, so the opponent must have a sixth land in hand. Reveals Primeval Titan. Oh, it's Breach Titan. Jeez. Well... <laughs> this is gonna hurt. I think they get 18 points of damage in here. And Sacred Foundry, so a not straight red-green, which is interesting. We do at least get to survive this hit. So I suppose we're on the hope the opponent doesn't have anything else planned? No point in blocking. All right, there goes the Titan. And a Ranger of Aos is the draw. Well, we can't cast that yet. We can, however, cast Marta. And Marta can gain us 15 life. And I think we're sucking this Marta straight away because if we don't, we are dead to a land and a lightning bolt. Whereas they actually need to have something reasonable this way, and because they have to pay for Pact this turn, we will have this turn. But even a fetch land there, that represents six points of damage, that's two bolts. Okay, we draw flagstones. So I'll play that out, grab a Mistvale Plains, cast my Ranger, and I don't think we're realistically ever going to get Sarah Ascendant properly online here, because almost all of their deck is lands, and what, we can gain 15 more life, but we're taking probably 12 before we do that, so I think we're just getting more martyrs, are we? Hmm, not really sure how we win if we're getting as martyrs, though, because they could just mow down our board if they chose to. So I suppose I should get a Sarah Ascendant in that case? In any case, I'll attack for three here, put my opponent to 11, and just pass the turn. And this turn they have all their mana, so it's time to see if they've got us an uh They've got us. And yeah, with that, we'll go on to game number two. Alrighty, so for sideboarding against uh, Breach Titan, we don't have a lot going on. We've got Avon Mind Tensor, which is really, really strong, so that's good, but we've only got one copy of that. And then the only other real good card we have is Surgical. It's good because hopefully we can Ghost Quarter or Field of Ruin one of their Valkits, then Surgical it, and that would be really strong. Um, I'm going to take out our Wraths just because with the Breach Titan, like, 
sorcery speed removal is just really bad. And with that, I think we'll just give this a go. I'm bringing in Gideon as well, just because it's aggressive, and I just want to be able to kill my opponent in a reasonable amount of time. And I think this is the most aggressive card in my sideboard, and I don't have a fourth card I even want to bring in. So we'll try it like this, see how I go. All right, and we're keeping this opener. It's got a Ghost Quarter and a Surgical in it, which I think is enough for me to give it a go. The unfortunate thing for us is that it's not really going to kill the opponent in a reasonable amount of time. But you never know, we could draw like a Gideon or a Ranger Bayos or something to uh, give ourselves a reasonable clock. So we'll lead on Plain Sarah Ascendant. Oh, that is good news. Opponent is leading on a Valakit. Alright, we're gonna get in for one here. Gain a bit of life, and I think I'm just gonna go for this in the draw step right away. So draw step, we'll go ahead and Ghost Quarter Valakit. They're gonna bolt a Sarah Ascendant in response. And now I'll go ahead and Surgical Valakit. All right, we've got one out of their hand, which is sweet. Huh, they actually kept their hand without green mana, which was super dodgy of them. But thanks to our Ghost Quarter, they're actually going to get to cast that, which is a bit annoying. But they don't have Valakits now, which means they're just going to be, what, they've got an Emrakul. They can't Pact for that, of course, it's not green but they can Nahiri for it. So they've got Primeval Titans just as 6-6 six, six attackers, and they've got Nahiri, Breach, Emrakul to worry about. Still plenty enough to kill us, so we will have to find a lot more than we've got at the moment to close this one out, as the opponent's going to Farseek. Finds a Sacred Foundry, and we find Flagstones. Just hoping to hit a 4-drop. Opponent's got another Farseek. We already knew about these, and of course we also know that they have a Pact in hand, so they will get to potentially play a 6-6 six, six next turn, which is a little scary. And we draw Field of Ruin, which is not exciting. I'm gonna go for the draw step, Field of Ruin, the Sacred Foundry. And here's Pact. So yeah, Titan incoming. So opponent's gonna have all the mana in the world. I'm pretty sure we know their last card is Anger of the Gods, because we saw it earlier. Weirdly enough, they actually chose not to search up lands with Primeval Titan. They did get a basic off that one, though. Yikes, and we just keep drawing lands. Opponent's gonna pay for Pact. They play a land, it's back on us. Okay, and there's a Gideon, so one of those aggressive sideboard cards we were talking about. And we'll make a Knight, even though we know it's going to be killed, because there's no point in plussing Gideon this turn. Uh-oh, that's a Primeval Titan. Alright, well I'm gonna Ghost Quarter my Flagstones, thin out my deck a bit and get a little closer to a Maria. But the big question is going to be, can we answer this prime time? Planes is not really the answer we were looking for. And so if the opponent's going to sweep our board and then kill Gideon with Primeval Titan next turn, my question is, am I supposed to just cash in for an emblem just to get a little bit more value out of future creatures? I mean, that feels really bad, but I mean, we've got nothing going on anyway. Yeah, so I guess I'm doing that just because I already know about the um, anger in that hand. I have no attacks. Yeah, there's the anger. Um, I suppose, am I putting a path back into my deck, or a Saracen or something? Or a Gideon? I want to draw a path, I don't want to draw the other one, so I guess I'll put a path back in. And there goes my board. Alright, we find Squadron Hawk, which I guess is okay. Thanks to my emblem, the Squadron Hawks are a lot better, and I can actually uh, potentially trade with the Titan. The risk is, of course, a single bolt blows out that triple block. So yeah, if the opponent's attacking, I think... I think because of the risk of a bolt blowing me out, and because I can potentially win this race, I guess I'm just not blocking? We are also getting into the territory where they could hard cast an Emrakul, so that's super scary. Ooh, Ballista's interesting. Alright, opponent's down to seven. I'm gonna go ahead and run up Ballista for three here. Okay, that's a Nahiri out of the opponent. Do they not have anything? They're looting here. They ditch a Rexage. What did they find? They scoop it up! Alrighty! We got a game off of, uh, Breach Titan! Whew, so it was the dream start for us, and, um, we got there! We only just got there, but we did get there, so I guess it's possible. Let's see if we can do it twice. Alrighty, so after that game, I feel like I want to bring in the Elspeth. Because in a spot like that, if I am able to get ahead, I kind of need more closing power, it felt like. I'm not super sure of what I want to be cutting, though. I feel like it's probably this Avacyn, maybe this Walking Blister. Avacyn does protect me from Angers, though, which is pretty nice. You know what, I think I'm actually going to trim two Thraven Inspectors. It's, a uh, they're pretty quick. And we'll still have two Thraven Inspectors to tutor for if we want that utility out of them. So I reckon I'll just do it like this. Huh, look at this opener. Like, 
Can I mulligan an opener like this? Doesn't have the hate cards in the matchup, but I'm feeling like I probably need those. But Ranger of Aos is probably my best card, and this does give me scope to potentially get Martyr, Sarah Ascendant going, especially with the Squadron Hawks filling out my hand. I feel like with them mulliganing, maybe I just keep this because this is the kind of hand which can actually apply some pressure. It's very possible I'm just supposed to mulligan for hate cards. Or I could just be lucky and draw them off the top. But it's leading on a Sacred Foundry, which is good, it's not a ramp spell. And Thraben Inspector is a pretty good draw for the first turn. Gets me going with something. Okay, here's a Farseek. No Valkyrie's in play yet anyway, even if I did draw a Surgical. We draw Flagstones. I'm gonna go ahead and play out a Hawk. We'll grab a couple of his friends. And we'll bash for one. And we draw Avacyn. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna just play an Ameria. We'll bash for two. We could get breached next turn, which would suck. I feel like I just sort of need to hope they don't have it, though. Alright, so no breach. Very, very high chance of getting Titan next turn, though. So with that in mind, we'll bash for three. And we'll cast our first Ranger of Aos. Could get a Kami of False Hope, but I'm not super concerned about the combat damage. I think we just get Marta Ascendant. And moving to Discard, I suppose we're checking out Planes? Alright, Anchor from the opponent. That's okay. I'd rather be angered than tightened. And the opponent did miss their 6th land drop, so let's hope that continues. As we get to play Marta here. And I'm gonna go right ahead and gain 15 life. And deploy Sarah Ascendant. And I think it's worthwhile to deploy a Squadron Hawk here, because this makes it a 2 turn clock. Oh wow, the opponent's casting Search for tomorrow, so they will have 6 mana for next turn, but that means this turn they do not. They're gonna bolt Squadron Hawk. Ooh, and that's a Rune Tailor. That is a good one. So we do get to get in for 6 here. And now the question is, what am I supposed to do, Rune Tailor or Ranger? I feel like it's very unlikely they can kill me with Valakit next turn. They're more likely going to be able to mow down some creatures. So if I get prime time next turn, they could grab two Valakits, then play a fetch land or something, play a mountain, deal six damage or something. So they could kill a Sarah Ascendant. But I feel like if I play Ranger of Aos and I just grab a Mata and a Sarah Ascendant, deploy the Sarah Ascendant, Mata's in case they uh, decide to go ham on my face with a scapeshift or something and deal 18 to me to reduce my life total. I feel like they're going to have a hard time dealing with this, and yeah, they scoop it up! Alright, so they stumbled and we got to win there. So... <laughs> that felt like it's not going to happen very often, but hey. Hey, I will take it, and that means we just got to take out uh, Titan Breach with this mono white deck, which has <laughs> very few of the uh, good white cards, like this one in it. Uh, to deal with that matchup. So that's sweet. And let's keep going, eh? Alright, we are on the play playing some more Mataprak. We've got a 7 that we can pretty reasonably keep here. Let's hope Thraben Inspector's good, eh? Lead off on a Flagstones into Thraben Inspector. Ooh, and that's a Stitches Supplier. Okay, doesn't ditch any Vengevines, so that's something. Doesn't actually ditch any Bridges either, so pretty reasonable. And am I supposed to even attack into this? I feel like... I feel like I'm probably not. Because I don't think I'm equipped to handle our explosive starts at the moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and Squadron Hawk, fill up to seven cards in hand, and I think I'm just gonna pass the turn. Such a supplier, of course, puts three cards in the graveyard when it dies, which is what I'm trying to avoid. Don't want to ditch any Bridge from Belows or Venge Vines, as we won't be good against them. There's another supplier. What does he hit? Gets a Blood Gas, is the only relevant creature that he hits. Okay, Bloodcast's coming back off of a Blood Crypt. And a Greater Gargadon has been exiled, so that will let the opponent kill off their suppliers whenever they choose. Yeah, and you can see the opponent is using that ability to kill off their suppliers, try to go for something big here. And so far they've missed. They didn't hit anything relevant off that one. They're gonna keep going for it, another Stitcher Supplier in the bin. And they hit a bridge from below this time. So the one good thing we have going for us with bridge as they sacrifice their blood guards to make a zombie. One good thing we have going for us is that if we draw a Marta, we can sacrifice that to remove Bridge from their graveyard. But we don't have a Marta yet. And we draw Field of Ruin. Doesn't do anything for us. So I suppose I can just bash, bash with both my creatures here. Opponent doesn't want to block because then they'll lose their Bridge. And I just play another Squadron Hawk this turn, I think. Still don't have anything I really want to name with my Rune Halo. You can't name uh, a token because tokens are not cards, right? And Rune Tailor requires you to name a card. So I can't just get protection from all the zombie tokens. Worth noting that this Archangel Avison in our hand right now could be a good one. 
The opponent has Viscerousia Gravecrawler. Okay, so they're gonna start going off a little bit with Bridge. And yeah, they're not gonna attack because they don't want to lose their Bridge, so... Good news for us, and that is a Martyr of Sands. Hello! I'm just gonna play and sack the Martyr immediately. That's gonna trigger Bridge and get rid of it. Opponent's going to sacrifice their Gravecrawler, make a zombie, of course, they can cast the Gravecrawler back from their graveyard. So, we still have to worry about Bloodcast and Gravecrawler coming back. And now the opponent has no reason not to start attacking. The good news, though, is Avacyn is really good on a board like this. Alright, there goes the bridge. We go up to 32 life, which is also nice. But on this board, if Avacyn flips, it just wraths their board. So that's what we're going for, is we get to beat in with our Squadron Hawks, try to play a little bit of a tempo plan with them. We also have to be aware of our opponent's ability to grade a Gargadon, but on 32 life, we're feeling pretty comfortable. So I think I'm just playing another Hawk for now. Opponent's deck is notoriously light on removal, so we don't even really need to flash in the Avacyn. Because it outsizes everything the opponent's got and they're not going to have removal for it, we can just play it on our turn, which means that we can play it with our Flagstone in hand. Alright, opponent's found a Vengevine in the bin. And they're getting back a Bloodgast. Or rather, they're casting the Bloodgast to get back the Vengevine. And I'm just going to take a hit here. We already gained more life off our Martyrs, so that's fine. And we draw a Mistvale Plains. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and play out our Avacyn here. It's going to give all our creatures indestructible till end of turn. And I'm just going to keep bashing with the Hawks. I'm going to leave the Thraven Inspector back, planning to block Vengevine with it. Or if the opponent goes for it, it'll block the Greater Gargadon. Alrighty, opponent's crumbling in with a big attack. We're going to line up our blocks like so. And opponent's just going to let it happen, so Avacyn is going to flip. And this looks good, so Avacyn's flipping. Three damage to each other creature and each opponent. Sorry, Squadron Hawks, but your days are numbered. Opponent looks like they're going to go for the Gargadon in response. Good news is we've got this Rune Tailor to protect us from the swing back, that nine powered creature. As the opponent is now down to eight life, we're attacking for six here. All right, they're down to two as we get to play out Rune Halo. Get protection from Greater Gargadon. Play out Mistvale Plains and play out a blocker in the form of this Squadron Hawk. And I feel like we've played out an outrageously fair game of magic to be in such a good spot right now. And yeah, they're just gonna scoop it up. Alright! Taking game one off of Bridgevine seems sweet. Alright, so for sideboarding here, I'm bringing in all my graveyard hate, I'm bringing in Elspeth, I'm bringing in Avis, let me saw out of power for what was the last game, and Eidolon. So, we'll try it like this. Alright, and I'm gonna keep this hand. So. Doesn't look super insane, but this is the kind of hand which can get a giant Sarah Ascendant very, very quickly. Opponent's got a Faithless Looting, though, which is a very scary turn one card for this deck. Alright, Bridge from Below Bloodgust. That's not so bad. No Venge Vines. Okay. Alright, so we didn't draw a White Spell, which would have made our life really easy. I think I'm gonna just run out my Martyr here. It's exposed. They could do something like Ballista and kill it. Generally, this deck isn't very focused on removal. And if this lives, I can just play a 6-6 next turn. And I think that the speed of me getting that card into play, that 6-6, is super important. Because I think that if it's on turn 2, it can potentially win me the game. If it's on turn 3, I'm probably taking a whole bunch of damage and just going to be below 30 life anyway. Right, opponent's going for a Stitcher Supplier. Ooh, that's scary. So two bridges in the bin. But if they can't make a lot happen this turn, me sacrificing my Martyr will get these bridges out of their bins. So it will keep it under control a bit. They are shocking down to 14. It's a Grave Crawler. Got no way to sacrifice. So I get to go planes here. Now I get to sacrifice Marta. That's going to remove their two bridges. They go, don't make a single zombie. I'm up to 32 life, and now I've got a 6-6 six, six with lifelink in place, so they can't attack through this. And wow, that combo was good against this deck. So obviously if they had Venge Vines coming out on turn two, we'd be in a lot of trouble. But you can see the bridge from below draws just do not cut it against what we're doing here. Alright, opponent's gonna flash back a Faithless Looting. They ditch a Bloodgast, but there's no... Okay. So they are attacking with Stitcher Supplier. So they're basically sending the message that they want it to die. Um, I guess I'll just take the one damage. It's not gonna harm my Ascendant. Alrighty, and we get in for six here. Opponent's down to eight, we're up to 37. And we do have a path to help hopefully protect our life total from dipping below 30 here. Okay, that's a Stitcher Supplier. 
think the scariest thing they could do right now is probably land, get back, bloodgast, kick a bushwhacker. But they don't have it. They don't have it and we win the match. Ho ho ho! There we go. That was a really, really impressive performance out of this Marta deck. And I was really happy to see it. So I'm glad you guys got to see it too. Awesome. Let's continue. Alrighty, we are on the play playing some Marta proc here. And we've got an opening seven that... I guess we're keeping. It's got Ghost Quarter Crucible. Let's hope that's really good in whatever this matchup is. And we've got Marta of Sands plus Squadron Hawk to fill up our hand with white spells. So a couple of nice things going on here. I probably don't want to run this out on one just because if the life gain matters a lot here, I don't want to give my opponent a chance to kill it off. And I don't gain very much by having it out this early. Okay, it's a snow-covered mountain. We'll see if they're scred or if they're just playing that for style points. In any case, I'm going to lead out on a Squadron Hawk. Just pick up two extra Hawks. Up to seven cards in hand and pass the turn. I'll tell you what, if they are scred, this uh, Ghost Quarter plus Crucible is going to look really embarrassing. And it's a scred. All right, so Squadron Hawk down. And that's no big deal. He just uh, basically got a three for one, picking up two of his buddies. Ooh, Sark and Fireblood. Yep, makes sense. There are dragons coming our way. Alrighty, so I've got a cavern here. I think I'm just going to name human because most of our creatures are humans. And hmm, we'll just run out our Martyr of Sands here. I want to hold up my path to exile. Although obviously if the opponent does go and storm breath dragon instead of some other kind of dragon here, then obviously the path will look a bit embarrassing. Yeah, it's a storm breath dragon, so pro white. Protection from white is pretty good against our mono white deck, I will admit. Good news for us is we can wrath that away, but I will reveal my hand to gain a bunch of life now. 15 in total. And we draw a Maria, not bad. It means we'll be able to wrath next turn. In the meantime, I think I'm just gonna run out another Squadron Hawk here. Get the last one out of my deck. Okay, and it's a Glory Bringer, so I guess we're gonna get some good value out of our wrath. We did show the wrath to the opponent. I could Ghost Quarter one of my own lands to then path this Glory Bringer, but I just don't think it's worth it. We can go ahead and chump the Glory Bringer because we're going to Wrath anyway. And we'll go ahead and Day of Judgment. So the scary thing now is that this Sarkin is very, very close to ultimating. And the dragons just keep on coming as the opponent's just adding mana every single turn. So they're on three lands. And this is now their third dragon. Which sounds crazy. All right, so frustratingly, we don't really have anything going on here. I'm going to play out my Crucible, I think, and Ghost Quarter my Cavern to get a Plains. Then just replay my Ghost Quarter out of the bin. And I think I'm just playing a Martyr of Sands here. So if the opponent does ultimate next turn, obviously they'll have a million power in play. At that point, we'll be in a spot where I think we basically need to find... Okay, opponent's going to Scred, so we're going to go ahead and uh, reveal our hand to gain 15 life. So between... If we can start forecasting our Proclamation of Rebirth, ideally the card we want to find is Kami of False Hope, I think. So we can fog every turn. And of course, like, gaining 15 life every turn, something like that. It's not actually going to stop them completely, but it goes a long way to doing it. And, you know, I've got three more Wraths to draw to as well. So we're in a pretty dicey spot right now, but our opponent is playing their last card. They're out of cards in hand. Sarkin's ultimating, so... This is a scary board, but we have outs, and if we draw a Wrath, I think we basically just win. If we draw a Kami of False Hope, I'm feeling good. Oh, and that's a Wrath. Right off the top, right on cue, that is a Wrath. I'll take it. So, Wrath of God? This feels so dirty right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my lord, that was just so brutal. Poor opponent. Poor, poor, poor opponent. But yeah, we had a lot of good top decks there. So obviously our four Ranger of Eos get Kami, right? We've got, of course, the Kami itself to draw. We've got the three Wraths to draw. That's already eight insane top decks. Alrighty, let's crack this clue because we don't have a lot going on in our hand right now. All right, flagstones. So this turn we just get to play out a Hawk, bash for one and hold up Path to Exile. Opponents just activating their scrying sheets that did that last turn as well, so it looks like they're just drawing lands for the time being. And whatever's on top, it must be a spell, because they didn't reveal anything just then. And they're hardcasting Simeon Spirit Guide, which is always a desperation move. Okie dokie. And how close are we getting to this Ameria is the next big question. 
We can start forecasting soon, but we don't really have much good to get back. It's gonna play out the Mistvale Plains. Get in with my Hawk and pass the turn. Okay, and that's a Sycan for the opponents. That's a good draw. And Scrying Sheets does find them a card to draw, which Sycan can then discard to potentially turn into a spell. So that's a really nice little value engine they've got going. And we draw Plains. So we get to attack Sarkin here. Keep the pressure on him. We now get to use our Mistvale Plains to put a Squadron Hawk back in our deck. And now we can cast the Squadron Hawk, always keeping one in our hand for this reason. Get his friend and pass the turn. And opponent's gonna keep looting with Sarkin. Scrying Sheets. But yeah, having overcome that early game obstacle, right? With the amount of pressure we can put on the Planeswalker just with our Hawks, and the fact that we're building up to Amiria, which is going to be online in one turn from now, um, at that point, we'll start to have this inevitability that I think that the opponent just won't be able to keep up with. Okay, and they're going to abrade our Crucible. We weren't getting much value out of that anyway. So hopefully they can't kill our Ameria, because that's the only thing we really care about at this point. As we'll Ghost Quarter our Flagstones here. We could kill their Scrying Sheets, but I think just getting Ameria online is more important. Grab a Mistvale Plains. That's six planes in play. We've got the seventh in our hand. That's a Ranger of Aos, which is a nice draw. It's a really nice draw, actually. Now I get to pressure Sarkin, putting him down to two. Ranger can get two copies. Oh, that's nice, too. They're going to scred a Squadron Hawk, and that means that we get to play two six sixes, and they just can't do anything about it. So here comes the Ranger. He's going to grab Sarah Ascendant, Sarah Ascendant. And now... Now we've got a scary looking board. It's a nice showdown here. The uh, mono red deck versus the mono white deck. The two sort of fringe decks of the format. And oh, that's going to shut off our Amiria, but it's not going to stop us from casting anything at any point in the game. And I think Blood Moon is just, uh, well, it's bad. And it's also just way too late to be in impactful. I'm going to start forecasting here. Grab a Mardo Sands. Draw another Ranger of Aos too, just in case we needed it. And we'll go ahead, send one of our 6-6s six at Sark and everything else the opponent's face. And we've got them in a spot where they're dead next turn. We're on 50, soon to become 62 life with our Mata. And the opponent scoops it up, so we're up 1-0 here. Going for the 4-1 in our league. Alrighty, so for sideboarding, I don't have a lot I want to cut. I feel like we're really well set up to uh, take on this deck. Although I do like Wrathing Dragons, so I've got Cleansing Nova coming in and Elspeth Sun's Champion coming in for that reason. And a Hex Parasite. I don't think these cards particularly amazing here, but they are running Planeswalkers, and I like having it just as a tutor target for Ranger of Aos. So I'm going to bring in these three and try it like this. Alright, well I said I liked Wraths, and here we are. Two Wraths in our opening hand and two Ranger of Aos. Ranger is absolutely my favorite card in this deck. So we get to lead on Amiria. Kidding our fourth land drop immediately is really nice. Always good to know that we'll be able to cast our spells. Okay, there's an Eidolon of the Great Rebel. Does die to Wrath. So we just drew a Rune Tailor. We could get protection from Eidolon, but I feel like that's not even worth it because, I mean, this is going to die soon anyway. Hmm. I mean, I suppose I want to force my opponent to play more stuff into my Wrath, and it's not like Rune Tailor is particularly good here anyway. Best name normally, I guess, be Stormwrath Dragon. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do it. Rune Tail is basically just like the weakest uh, removal spell in this matchup, I think. So Eidolon the Great Rebel is named. And now Eidolon just deals damage to the opponent and not to us, as they cast Sarkin, which will hit them. They're going to loot with Sarkin. Discarding Glorybringer, jeez. They must have a lot of dragons in their hand to be doing that. So Eidolon attacks, doesn't deal any damage. Alright, we draw flagstones. Suppose I'll play out flagstones. Grab Mistvale well Plains. And obviously just pass the turn. An opponent's got Chandra Torture Defiance. There we go. That's a uh, pretty good one. Oh, wow. And they're actually using nothing but Planeswalker mana to cast a Thunderbreak region here. Okay, and we draw a Sarah Ascendant. Interesting. So we could Wrath, but that would basically just be one fawning this Thunderbreak. I kind of want to get a Ranger of Aos into play. And we'll use Ranger of Aos to grab, I think, Hex Parasite and Marta of Sands is, I think, the cards we want. So up to seven cards in hand, which is nice. 
Okay, Sarkin's ticking up dangerously close to ultimate range here, as the opponent discards a Leyland of the Void, which is uncastable when it's not in their opening hand. Alright, Chandra's gonna plus hit another Leyland of the Void, there we go. Puts us down to 16, Thunderbreak can put us down to 12. And Stormbreath can make that 8, so I think we're wrathing this turn. Alright, down to 8 we go. The Raven Inspector is the draw. So we'll attempt to swing at Chandra here. Opponent's gotta be eager to trade off this Eidolon, which doesn't do anything. But yep, they make the trade. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and Ghost Quarter my Flagstones before I Wrath. I'm gonna Mist Veil Planes out of the deck. Cast Day of Judgment. And I think it's just the Raven Inspector here. Okay, opponent's looting with Sark and they just discarded a, another Eidolon of the Great Rebel because we would still have protection from it. Chandra's gonna plus and put us down to six la- oh no, they're gonna scred the Thraven Inspector, sure. Just gonna keep the pressure off of their Planeswalkers. And here's a Thunderbreak. So we're still under a lot of pressure. We draw a Field of Ruin. So we're in a very difficult spot right now. I don't think we care about- I, I don't think we care about Sarkin ultimating. So I think what we have to do is use Hex Parasite to just remove three counters off of Chandra. And now leaving up the ability to, um... Sacrifice Martyr of Sands, otherwise we're just dead to Chandra plussing into Thunderbreak attack. But it's not gonna ultimate the Sarkin, which makes sense. Alright, they're gonna plus their Chandra. Puts us down to four. Ooh, and they're not attacking with the Thunderbreak, which is very interesting. And I think I'm actually not sacrificing Martyr, because I can get more white cards in my hand if I don't. Alright, and I think what I'm going to do this turn is actually end up just gaining 9 life immediately, up to 13. And that makes me feel safe enough to go ahead and just use Hex Parasite to kill Chandra. Because the opponent only has one card in hand and we're still on 11 life this way. And yeah, the opponent's going to ultimate their Sarkin. So we are going to be forced to Hallowed Burial next turn. And we are going to take 4 down to 7. All right, and they play a land as well, so there's no chance of them having double bolt here, which means I think I'm free to just go ahead and kill Sarkin using my Hex Parasite, putting me down to five life. Importantly, all their haste dragons usually are only going to be hitting for four. And now I get to Hallowed Burial. Cool thing about Hallowed Burial is that we can actually tutor up this Hex Parasite again with this Ranger of Eos, if we decide we want to do that. And now I just need to dodge Bolt Bolt, or say a Haste Dragon plus Bolt, and that's a land, so that means we get to untap. So I'll sack this clue, we find a Field of Ruin, and we're looking very, very good now. That's a Plains, which is sweet. So we're getting closer and closer to a Mary. we have currently got five Plains in play. Now what do we want with Ranger of Eos? I feel like we want at least one Martyr of Sands. And then the question is, do we want the Hex Parasite back? Probably don't need it at this point in the game. So we could get Double Martyr. I'm thinking just a Thraben Inspector, just to get a bit of my grind going. So I'm just gonna play and sacrifice the Martyr. Gaining six to a very safe 11. Get my Claw off the Inspector and pass it to the opponent. Okay, they have a Chandra. But we have so much pressure in play, it's not gonna do a whole lot. They find a Lightning Bolt with it, which is in all honesty, a really impressive hit. Take out our Ranger of Eos. We'll crack our clue here, find a cavern and a squadron hawk, okay. So we'll play the cavern on bird, play out our hawk, and play out another hawk here. Opponent exiles a cavern of souls, putting us down to nine life. Just gonna ghost quarter my cavern of souls just to increase my planes count for Ameria. Now I get to swing in at Chandra for four. Down to one. We'll put this Martyr in play. Haven't played out the Sarah Ascendant. It's a 1-mana one 1-1. One one. It's not going to get me much value. I don't really want to just lose to an Anger of the Gods or something. When it pluses into a Bolt, we'll see where they point this. Just at my face. I'm just going to respond by sacrificing my Martyr, just in case their last two cards are burn spells. Just playing it super safe. Alright, that's nice. Let me draw a Ranger of Eos. So now I get to take out Chandra here. Play out our Ranger of Eos, just grab Marta and Thraben Inspector with it, go ahead and gain 9 life, play the Thraben Inspector, crack the clue, and yeah, just pass the turn. Alrighty, opponent has a Glorybringer, which is attacking, which I'll be honest, I didn't expect it to do. 
I'm gonna take out my ranger. But I've gone wide enough that I'm just winning this race anyways. Really wishing that Field of Ruin could hit my own lands at this point of the game. And yeah, I'm just gonna keep passing the turn. Alright, opponent's passing back to us. We draw a path, which is sweet. As we get to get in for more points here. Alright, we get to get the opponent's Glorybringer out of the way with a path to exile. Another Field of Ruin, of course. Uh, Mary's just never going to be on land, but it's okay. Our opponent's very nearly dead. And yep. Yeah, the opponent scoops it up, which is going to conclude a 4-1 league with Martaproc. So, yeah, I mean, in all honesty, um, the deck did better than I expected it to do. At no point did I feel like when I was playing this deck I was doing especially powerful things. I felt like I was playing this ridiculously fair game of magic with, um cards that felt like they were sort of underpowered, but it just sort of works. It's extremely grindy, of course, with all of these two for ones like Rangers and Squadron Hawks and Thraben Inspectors and so on. And of course, there is power in the Sarah Ascendant Mata of Sans combo, but yeah, it just, uh, it played out better than, um, better than I felt like it was going the whole way through, which is a really, really weird feeling. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this uh, series of matches with me today, and I hope you liked seeing the deck that managed to take down an entire peak DQ. 9-0 is the score you have to get over nine rounds to achieve that feat. And if you do enjoy it, of course, please stick around on the channel. Please uh, subscribe to the channel, because, um, I want to build up a bit of an audience and I want to hear what you guys have to say because I do want to try mixing it up a bit in the future. So that is all from me for now, for today. So I'll hopefully see you guys all again soon.